Hello, this is Greg Prado, author of the books Take It Off, Kiss Truly Unmasked, as well as The Eric Carr Story, amongst many others. You're listening to the Shattered Out Loudcast with Tom and Zeus. Rock and roll! Oh boy. Here we go. Oi. Down. Kiss. Stop pressing the button. Star Breaker Simmons. Star? Paul Stanley. Is that what he does? Stop shouting. Hey, Riley. He's not what you would call a handsome man. Oh, no. Here come the kiss times. Is that a positive thing? Okay. All right. I'm going to grab me a nice cold mellow meow. Why? Why do that to the fans? Stop it. Why? Because fuck them. Six one seven five two five zero eight fifty. You do? Hey, fuck Do you like this? Settle down. Hello. Hey, what's up, there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus in another episode of Shout It Out Loudcast, episode two hundred and twelve. Twentieth century masters, the best of Kiss, the Millennium Collection. Volume two, Electric Boogaloo. It's been a while. Yeah, compilation talk. This is the first time in a few weeks. It's just me and you. I know. I like yeah. it. Yeah, I I like it. Dun, 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 dun. That's right. It's compilation time. We love bitching about these shitty collections. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to get started. Yeah. Oh, man. Welcome new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you hear this um on Saturday, you will have heard us on Thursday. Today is Wednesday. We will be recording tomorrow on Eddie Trunk's uh serious uh satellite program. That's right. Trunk Nation, we're gonna be on there. Well, hopefully by the time you hear this, you will have heard us. Now, if you missed it live, if you have the app or if you subscribe to the package where you can get the internet, a lot of his shows, I think all of them are on demand. So you can find us. We were on Thursday, the 23rd at about the 4.30, 4 o'clock hour, talking top five least favorite Kiss songs. And we come, uh, we're not spoiling yeah. that right now. So I was going to say, we come a long way. You think? I mean, we thought we thought we thought it was great when we had him on our show a few times. Then we started interacting with him in email and Twitter. And this whole thing organically came up because we were getting into a conversation on Twitter about Unmasked because our guest from last week, Don Jameson and Eddie love Unmasked. Oh. The dialogue began. So Eddie emailed oh. us and says, hey, this Twitter conversation gave me a great idea. If you guys are available, let's talk top five least favorite kiss songs. So. Oh. You love unmasked. You're such a liar. Yeah, that's such that's a, it. You got me. Liar. I nailed you. Oh, that's it. Just I, I just I can only take so much. I, t- Are you saying there's a thing called an unmasked tard? <laughs> no, no. A shandy tard? A sh- a sham tard? <laughs> it's just no, no, no. It's just um, it, the the opinions the group think of a lot of shit. And that's what it is. It's not, I, I get to the point where I get frustrated sometimes and maybe it's this or the other stuff. We will every once in a while, something will be posted and we'll get the anti grunge comments back. It's just this butt hurt, fucking sensitive, fucking insecure rock fans that can't hold two thoughts in their head. How do you like what's called hair metal? And how do you like what's called grunge? Because I like good music. I pick and choose. Guess what? There is some grunge shit that sucks. Guess what? There's a lot of hair metal music that sucks. And now you know how I, now you know how I feel coming off the heels of our latest album review crew, where I adore Operation Mindcrime (laughs) and you and, and you and Pooty like, this is too long. This is too boring. This is too this. uh, It's rank 32. (laughs) What the what? fuck? When I was in middle school and starting out into my hard rock, all this music that I was liking on my own and getting into hard rock music, 
I didn't think one day I'm going to have a podcast with this guy I'm going to meet in a few years named Tom. And when I do, I'm going to shit on Queensryche. No, when I was in middle school and I heard certain bands, I liked certain music. When I saw Jeff Trot, a.k.a. Jeff Tate, and his rap lips up there singing songs, I'm like, oh, this band just doesn't do it for me. I didn't do it because I'm like, oh, I want to punk Tom out. Oh, I didn't say you. that. Oh, I don't care why you. Do. Oh, hey, I don't care why you. No, I don't care I, why you would. I know you and Poonie don't have like some ulterior motive. No, you, no. you, you know, you both have questionable music tastes. Okay, it's okay. Dude, coming from the man that doesn't like the Scorpions. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> My liking say- the Scorpions is harder for me to understand. I think then people say me not liking um, Queens Rikers, but I will say this: I have owned Scorpions CDs in my lifetime. I just kind of outgrew them because I just <laughs> <laughs> we are Scorpions. Uh, you know what? Maybe it's a problem I have. Maybe I just don't like bands that aren't from the United States. <laughs> Maybe that's my ra- problem. Racist. <laughs> I'm a I'm a metal xenophobe. I don't know. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Big fan of loudness. Are you? Uh, well. We'll save that for a, we'll save that for another ARC episode. Yeah. Oh boy. Hey, before we get to the poll, Tom, what about our friend, the tax man, Tony Barone? That's right. Tony Barone, ABCPA Inc. ABCPA Inc. is an accounting firm located in the suburbs of Chicago that can assist you with all of your accounting and tax needs. For business, they offer bookkeeping, financial statements, payroll processing, payroll tax returns, sales tax returns, filing federal and state income tax returns, and help with starting your own business as well. For individuals, they offer help with sole proprietorships, rental real estate, trust and estate tax returns, and filing personal federal and state income tax. They have access to all 50 states. So whether you live in Rhode Island or South Dakota, ABCPA Inc. can prepare and e-file on your behalf. Did you know KISS Army? If you own a business with employees and have had a 20% reduction of revenue than you did in 2019 due to COVID or state-managed shutdowns, you might be entitled to additional tax credits. Follow them on Facebook and LinkedIn and visit them on their website at abcpainc.com. That's abcpainc.com. Or email our buddy Tony at tony at abcpainc.com. That's tony at abcpainc.com. Or call him. At 708-430-3232. Again, that is 708-430-3232. Yeah, ABCPA Inc. Hey, and also, we have a few other people that have been asking. Uh, it all varies. I, I know people have said asked us uh, privately in DMs and stuff about advertising with us. If you want to, we'll we'll happy to talk to you guys about that. We have Absolutely. different parts of the program, different actually side cast we do. So there are different opportunities. If you're interested in doing that, please let us know. We're happy to discuss any and all options. Just send us a DM or an email and uh we'll talk to you guys. And uh hopefully you'll be as happy as our sponsor, ABCP Inc. Absolutely. If you guys are interested in sponsoring question of the week, sponsoring something on dorm damage, or sponsoring something on album review crew, let us know. Please send us an email, send us a DM, and we'd love to talk to you guys. So thank you. All right, Tom, before we go forwards, we go backwards. Uh, last week, we had the hilarious um, Don Jameson on, and uh, we talked about a few different things, but we uh, decided to use the comment of the week as basically the question for the yep. week in our poll and what was that so the poll like zeus said is based on our question of the week which was if gene was using tracks would he get as much crap as paul surprising results here we got a lot of votes on this 53 percent said yes 47 percent said no way so pretty close there almost 50 50 which is a little bit surprising a uh, couple poll comments here Let's see, our buddy Zandon Black. The real question is, is Paul jealous that Gene doesn't need tracks? Hmm, I don't know if Gene doesn't need them. 
John Bailey says, I say yes, because all of his past shit talk would bite him in the ass, I think. And Zeus, that's what you said when we talked about this last week. You said him being on record as, you know, we're the big boys. We do it, blah, blah, blah. Um, that would probably bite him in the ass. Uh, let's see. couple episode comments here. Oh, yeah. Our buddy Wally Vidal. Great episode. Made it even better when you guys mentioned my favorite Kiss song of all time. Easy as it seems, dude. If that's your favorite Kiss song, hold you on. are not a Kiss fan. Hold on, we we do need to give a debt of gratitude to Wally because that is what catapulted this conversation, which led us to get onto Eddie Trunk's show. Okay, what? Well, how bad did I insult him? <laughs> you, your response literally said that song sucks. <laughs> no nuance at all. No joke. No, no nothing. Just that song sucks. Uh, I think if that's your favorite Kiss fan, then Kiss music. You're not a you're not a major Kiss fan because that's so out of the norm for them. Uh, we also have people who think Sonic Boom is the best Kiss album. So I mean, <laughs> Damn, a lot of, I think <laughs> no, that's King Kusano, but he's usually drunk tweeting anyway, so he probably doesn't even know what he's saying. It's okay. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Our buddy AJ White, great episode, guys. So fun to participate in your show, even though many of our voices are not heard. That is true. We have a lot of fans that like. Well, to wait a contribute. minute. I thought we only do use the same five people. Oh, we do. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love when people say that. AJ continues, whenever I listen, I pace around literally laughing out loud and screaming my ass off at the speakers at times. Hard at times not being able to share my KISS knowledge. You guys rock. AJ is an awesome Patreon supporter and a huge fan of the show. We love hearing from him. Uh, And that's what we got for Twitter. Let's move along with uh, feedback today. Over on the Book of Face, uh, Brian Robinson. Hey, guys. Except Tard here. (laughs) <laughs> you are missing some of the greatest riffs of all time. No, we aren't. Wolf Hoffman is right behind Tony Iommi as being one of the greatest riff masters. You really should check out, except the final chapter live. That's the final chapter live. Good. Bury it uh, as a good entry point. Balls to the wall. <laughs> is overplayed in only a small sample of another Riff King. Their new albums with Mark Totito, oh, Tornilo, a great dude. What is happening right now? I don't know. Is that a Steve Wright burner account? I don't know. (laughs) Why the fuck did I get caught into reading this long accept hard bucket post? Accept. Another band that's not from the United States. (laughs) <laughs> that constipated lead singer <laughs> who wolf hoffman <laughs> whatever the fuck his name is <laughs> that's wolf, not the that's wolf not their, lead, their lead singer no, i know like fucking I know. something called i don't know Udo fucking blah blah. Udo blah. dirk schneider <laughs> i don't know he isn't that constipated it? yeah i don't know you know like <laughs> yeah, Udo Dirk Schneider. How the fuck did I pull that out of my ass? <laughs> Settle down, Udo. <laughs> fucking terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> anyway, it's Jason <laughs> Warden. Great episode. I'm probably my favorite member of TMS. All Seems right. Eddie and even Jim get most of the coverage, but Dono is always the sharpest and most quick witted. As he demonstrates with this episode, love the line opening act for alcohol. That was good. Hope you get Jim on too, even though he's not the kiss fan. Eddie and Don are. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I think Don mentioned that to us too, to be honest. Uh, Over on loud casters, Josh Brown. I must've missed the disrespectful post. Come on. Loud casters. We're better than that shit. I think Tom, he's mentioning the part where you're like, dude, stop putting non like yes. kiss shit or like porn shit yep. like that's not funny porn shit. Yeah, exactly. We like funny porn shit. Yeah, that's it. Uh god damn that opening. I'm scared to see what else could be said on that Patreon. As a musician, I still don't oh. care on track. <laughs> I think the musician argument is so more framed from a perspective that people have put their time and energy into learning an instrument and taking the time to play shows and never getting the success people get to use the tracks. 
The drum triggers are a good point. And I would love to hear Joey's take on triggers. Dude, we don't need to hear Joey's fucking take on anything. That Joey one- actually comment. Joey commented on Eric Singer using like that kind of like, you know, not being able to follow the click track and all that shit. So we have our own little text group. And Joey, anytime we're like, hey, Joe, you want to come on for this? Yeah, sure. I'm available. I can record at 1130 on Tuesday night. Yeah, you guys available at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday? Yeah. Well, what are you, what are you, what are you going to bed? What's the matter? Why are you, how come you're not up? <laughs> and then he's like, I'm like, I get up at five, you fucking asshole. Oh, why? I don't know. Because I'm not fucking teaching kids how to play the bongos. I'm a fucking, a fucking regular dork job. <laughs> The fucking, the comments between the two of you about, like, availability and shit has been hilarious between Tom and Joey. It's been awesome. Oh, it's so funny. I love Joey. So funny. So funny. (laughs) He's like, like, what are you, sleeping? (laughs) Like, yes, I am. It's fucking 11 o'clock at night. (laughs) Fucking. Uh, Zeus, the more you mess with a telemarketer, the less they're messing with the elderly and stealing their shit. You know where you, we've talked personally about how bad that is when people try to steal information and everything is disgusting. As an attorney, as a musician, but as an attorney, you have no idea how many calls I get annually from people that gotten ripped off like this. Or they're not sure whether they should pay something and they call my office to say, hey, uh, I got to come like they're lying. It's a scam. It's a yep. scam. Nobody would call you and talk to you like it's a scam. It's a scam. You don't need to drop everything and run to the bank and get a fucking bank check and or wire funds or Venmo fucking to keep your electric on. <laughs> like, it's sad, but it's so out there and it's absolutely annoying. So, yeah, yep. I fuck with them, too, when they call. It's I, I, I actually get quite a lot of fun about it. Um, also, we need that metal show reunion. That show needs to come back. It would be cool if they were doing monthly podcasts of it. Why has that not happened yet? Well, we could always ask Eddie some point. As always, another great episode. Uh, Cameron Holiday. Hell yes, I hardly hear him do interviews. Also, he and Jim Florentine are great at crank calls. So I'm sure there will be many Jerky Boys connections and references. Yes, sir. There definitely was. Uh, over on our Loudcasters page, Radio Chaos continues the fucking chaos with this. Adam and the Ants fucking rule. What the Woo-hoo! fuck, dude? You we spent we monster. spent we spent we spent a ton of time on the latest ARC talking about that. That's right. Get ready for Kings oh. of the Wild Frontier. God. Yes. On our YouTube page. About the funk were said, who ba Tom? <laughs> yes. Why you dirty rotten rat son of a bitch. <sighs> Jalika <you like> kick? <laughs> uh, kick your ass. <laughs> Tales of a Kiss Geek says, guys, I don't know if you know this, but Phil is in accept. That's <laughs> why he's not with Ace. And then he also adds, I'm a musician. And uh, do you like Kiss? That's what we're going to discuss this week. What's today? That's a great fucking line right there. That's good. No, no. Think about Destroyer. Anyways, Tom, over to you, buddy. Okay, couple emails here. We got one from our website, which we love. People comment on a website comes to us in the form of an email. This comes from Tanya Holland, and she says, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> with the with the devil horn emoji, fire emoji, and heart emoji. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, and then we wrap up feedback with uh, our beloved friend Michael Murphy. I'm finally caught up on all the Sink and Stanley nonsense. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Maturity. <laughs> I'm team trunk on this one, and I do take issue with bands that use tracks, whether it be for lyrics and or instrumental purposes. And then he talks about the whole point of going to a show is to see it live. We get it. As Don Jameson said on your show, and I'm paraphrasing, if I wanted to listen to a band sound perfect like they do on their albums, I would just crank the album instead of paying $150 for the ticket. I find something disingenuous about selling tickets to a live show and then using backing tracks for vocals and instruments. Then he uses a bizarre example. I don't understand. Michael, we love you, but he's saying that this is similar to if you went to a Bruins game, Zeus. 
and found out that the Bruins were all robots controlled by Google. Oh, God. It's a little different, Mike, but I got you, buddy. I got you. I got you. Oh. Um, he says, I, I pay to see the amazing talents do something that only a handful of people on Earth can do. Well, I don't know about that. Everybody who listens to our show is a musician. It sounds like everybody <laughs> on Earth can do this. Oh, I'm a musician. Uh, he says, a little, I'm a little dramatic, yes, but that's my position, which I know everybody has been clamoring to hear. Besides, as a musician, because I played the recorder in third grade, it offends me when an artist uses tracks. Keep up the great work, fellas, Mike Murphy. Mike, we love you, buddy. We love interacting with you on email, social media. And for that, my friend, you are the comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, play uh, the intro to our show on your recorder. <laughs> Do that for us. Atta boy, Mike. Finally, something that we can kind of... Uh get behind it isn't as it's negative as it usually is yes exactly love it good stuff and tom what we do next is we give a shout out to our buddies and family over on patreon our patreon family continues to grow who knew members breaking our record again for as many patreon members this week we're welcome joe and Mike Grimes, both of them join us as Catman members. We are so appreciative, and thank you, guys, both of you, so much for joining the Patreon family. And it's real easy to do. If you guys are interested in more Shout Out Loudcast, getting into the fam, and becoming a Patreon member, you would go to our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. There's a button there. You click on that right on our landing page on our website. It says Patreon. Click there. There are four different tiers, four different levels. You can pick whatever one you choose and find out what, what fits your needs, whatever you like. Each category comes with different perks. Some have more than others, and they're different tiers. I think we need to switch them. I think Catman should be the highest tier, not the demon. But... No, for now, if, if we change if we change anything, we're adding a Vinnie Vincent Ankh warrior tier. We come to your house and punch you in the face. Um, yeah, you subscribe to our Patreon, and we give you nothing. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> Patreon family keeps growing. You guys hear it all the time. We keep adding members, and our family is just awesome. The interaction is hilarious. The uh, comments in the group are great. Uh, you guys get way more stuff behind the scenes, merch, all that stuff. You guys just picked uh, Operation Mind Crime, which we just released this week. You'll have another one in a couple months that we'll be picking from the ARC group, um, from the Patreon group uh, for ARC. And we have March Madness slowly creeping upon us. Patreon will be part of that. So if you are interested and you want to get involved and you want to join our Patreon family, go to the website, click on the Patreon link, or you can go to patreon.com or you can go to the Patreon app and go under creators. You'll see shout out loudcast. Click on that. Find a tier that works for you. Sign up and go from there. Uh, Tom, another two members for Patreon. You guys are the best. Huge shout out to our two new Patreon family members, the two Catmen, Joe and Mike Grimes, who is the co-owner of the Basement East in Nashville, Tennessee. Mike Grimes, man, that is awesome. And we know we've interacted with you a little bit before on social media. So this is amazing. Thank you so much for becoming a part of the Patreon family. We can't thank you enough. And again, Joe, also, thank you very much. You guys are the best. There's a lot of stuff coming up soon where we're going to need you guys uh, to help us get through some things. March Madness. And again, we got more Patreon stuff coming up with ARC. We just did Queensryche, as Zeus said. And uh, I don't know, a couple months will be coming up sooner than you think. So we're glad to have you guys on board. And we thank you guys, Mike and Joe, and of course, everybody else that's been a longtime member. So thank you guys. 
Yeah, come join the fun on the Patreon family, everybody. Sign up. Anyway, uh, Tom, what we do next is we go over to Kiss World and talk about what's going on there. All right, so some news broke today that Kiss is going to be a guest on the Howard Stern Show next Wednesday, March 1st. Uh, So some people are thinking that that might be where they're going to announce some of the U.S. dates, potentially the final show. We've also heard some rumors that the final show might be around Christmas time this year in December, uh, which would be interesting. And I don't know. We'll we'll see. But that that's the story right now. So uh, next Wednesday, if you have satellite radio, Sirius XM, uh, when you're done listening to me and Zeus on Eddie Trunk, uh, you could check out Howard Stern and Kiss and see what's going on with that. Also, we talk about Record Store Day a lot, or I do at least, about how KISS never gets involved in it. So we have some KISS-related news in Record Store Day, and that is the special deluxe release of the Eric Carr Rockology album, which looks amazing. So the album cover is beautiful. It The album cover is what an Eric Carr solo album would look like. So it's got that style, you know, his name up in the corner, the painting, uh, his image is like has like an uh, orange type of aura for a color. Uh, it's got five never before released uh, demo tracks. Uh, it's got some photos, liner notes. It's really cool looking. It's like black, orange, and clear like splatter vinyl. It's a double LP, and uh, that comes out on Record Store Day in the United States on April twenty second. Uh, if you're not familiar with Record Store Day, it's a day to celebrate local independent record stores. So you're not going to find these on Amazon. You're not going to find them anywhere. Uh, it's to get people to physically go inside record stores to keep those types of stores alive. Um, when Record Store Day was created, vinyl wasn't really what it is now. So the resurgence is out of this world for Record Store Day. I've been a couple times because I'm a vinyl tard. Uh, if there's something that I really want, people get up, people get up really early in the morning and get in line, like kind of old fashioned waiting for concert tickets. So, um, I think everybody's kind of excited about this. I have this on a picture disc, which historically picture discs sound like shit. Um, but I- I'll definitely be getting this one. And I think I'm not sure. I think I saw somewhere that this may also be getting a CD release because in recent years, they've started to include CD releases on record store day too. Uh, so that's something to keep an eye out for. So that's kind of exciting news for Eric Carr fans. Ace is still out there touring. Yeah, I'm out there busting my hump every night, singing my great tunes like Genghis Khan and Pain in the Neck. <laughs> it's a really great one. It's got a killer riff. Bronx Boy and uh, the Pursuit of Rock and Roll. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. That's a real banger. Uh, I see his live videos going up, not before his girlfriend likes to Make sure she's on camera first. Oh, she loves the camera. Yep. Oh, God, dude. He'll never fucking learn. Nope. Never learn. The only one that plays as smart is Gene and Paul with their Ooh. wives. They're they're on the side. They're doing their own thing. Yep. I love them. Great. I'll recognize him on Valentine's and birthdays and anniversaries. Congratulations. Or Gene will put something playful up there. But it isn't, hey, let me get let me get you involved in my fucking affairs. And then cry when you like when we break up and you're like trying to take over my shit. Just asking, yeah, no, I hear asking you asking for problems. And then uh, Peter Chris had some sort of an appearance where I saw a lot of Kiss tards, uh, Kiss fans had some uh, photos taken with him, and Peter looks great. Congratulations! Yeah, I, lo- I love seeing him out there having fun like that. Oh, yep. Just, just wish everyone else had his fucking awesome attitude about fans and appreciation. Man, he's he's great. And that's it for Kiss news. So uh, let's take a quick break, Tom, and uh, let's see if Peter is uh, over here fighting with another fan about the uh, value of vinyls over CDs. Hey, fucko, I just said I like them. I didn't say anything else. All right, we're back. Ace, I had a couple things to say, but. Who's buying compact discs? I haven't bought those in a hundred years. I like the colored vinyl and the picture discs, like with my spaceman and my ba- space bear. You ever see the video when he goes through albums? Someone's yeah. got to, yeah. oh, this is, you know, the cream. I mean, it's the best. I mean, nobody ever did music like that. You know, off oh, flat Zeppelin, like good times, bad times. Ever hear me sing that song? <laughs> yes. Don't do it anymore. <laughs> 
fucking ace. We love that Muppet. In the days of my youth. <laughs> when me and you saw him and he did that, we looked at each other like, <laughs> this is fucking podcast gold right now. How bad this is. Oh. <laughs> and Just the worst brutal. is the fucking ace cult. When, when his girlfriend goes, finally takes the camera off of herself and puts it on the band plane. <laughs> if, if, if you see the comments. The comments are always, oh, my God, this is incredible. Ace is the God. Ace. Dude, people are fucking just over the top with him. That's why there's an ace cult. Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyways, Tom, let's uh, talk about a compilation album. I think we both have. Uh, we've already done. 20th century, uh, the millennium best of kiss. He didn't say volume one because it just was the first one. Right. And now we're on to volume two. Yes. So we do this from time to time. We talk about compilations. We go through the tracks, what, sh- what should be there, what shouldn't, what is the era covering. And, uh, and then we break down the cover and the songs and we rank this. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one started from the beginning of the band's career and ended at dynasty. Uh, this one is the next chapter, uh, and it's supposed to take place from you know, picking up where it left off from Unmasked to Hot in the Shade. So it skips Unmasked and Music from the Elder and goes right to Creatures of the Night. Yeah, and it ends at Hot in the Shade. Yep. So you're talking about those albums in between. Okay. First of all, right off the bat, why are you skipping two albums? Well, I think anybody who is not a kiss tard is going to be able, what the hell are we going to put on that? Now me, I could easily pick 10 songs from unmasked and three or four from the elder, but I think they have to understand who's making these compilations. These are, these are like starter kits for kiss fans. Okay. I get it. However, Shandy was actually a hit somewhere. It, it was in Australia. Worst, yeah. It was, it's one of the worst kiss songs of all time. Watch yep. Wednesday. Yep. But, if if Shandy's not on it, Creatures of the Night is the first one that leads this off. Well, I, let me let me let me just jump in real quick because you're right. Two songs that could have made this that were, I use the word hits in quotes, are two of the songs that you can't stand in your entire life as a Kiss fan is Shandy from Unmasked and A World Without Heroes from The Elder. Now, A World Without Heroes had a video. Um, it's been played on MTV Unplugged. So if you wanted to represent those, al- those albums, that probably would have been the way to go. So right? they had a, a performance video of Talk to Me as well. Correct. And Correct. they actually put it on, live on comp- a few compilations as well. Now, there's a couple songs on this compilation here that, well, maybe not a couple, maybe one song on here where I think Shandy and A World Without Heroes are both bigger than that particular song. Yeah, we're not uh, we're we're only starting with those uh unmasked and elder because they would have been chronological. So that's the only reason. Yeah, of course. So right. I right. would say off the bat, are you missing out? It depends when you go through this list, but are you missing out on um Shandy and also maybe talk to me? If you're gonna right. put anything from unmasked, those two I would think right. are the and, and then the el- kind of. right, and then the, and then the elder would be a world without heroes, and maybe probably I. I maybe. technically right. there was a video, right? Well, it wasn't right? released. It wasn't released. But they they, did they it. made a vi- they made a video, but so, it was never released. Right? Okay. So if those four, maybe I would say okay, might be on there. Yeah. Now, if you're going for best tracks, we each have different opinions on what we think is the best tracks from Unmask and the Elder. Right. But. All right, so before we get into the tracks, let's backtrack a little bit. We started talking about Unmasked and The Elder and how they're not part of this. So before we do what we usually do with our process of getting into the tracks, let's talk about the cover, the pictures that are inside, and some of the liner notes, and then we'll get into the track by track. So it starts off with a with a group photo from the Crazy Nights era. Uh, the band looks pretty kick-ass, except for Paul. Looks, I don't know what the hell he's doing right there. You got Gene in the leather, Eric Carr with the Chikara all over the drums, Bruce in that radioactive outfit. And Paul wearing an Everlast tank top, pants, and some weird kind of space cowboy boots. <laughs> and then on the back of the liner notes, you got something from the Animal Eyes era because you got Mark St. John in the picture. Band actually looks pretty cool. Flip it open. You got a nice 
really awesome band cover from Creatures of the Night with Vinnie Vincent. Everybody's in makeup and gear. That looks really awesome. Uh, and you open up the int- the fold, and then you got a cool picture from the Hot in the Shade photo session there. Paul sitting down, cowboy boots, acoustic guitar. Uh, Eric Carr chewing on a piece of rope for some reason. <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, and then you have some liner notes with the headline. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you forgot oh, Bruce's hands are tied behind his back. Are they tied behind his back, or is he well, they just behind rope. his back? Okay, that's weird. You're right. I don't get that. Ed. What the fuck is that? And then Gene just pulling down his glasses, being like, "What am I doing here?" That's weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's weird. And then you get some liner notes with the headline: "If the '70s was a period of world domination for Kiss, the '80s was a period of rejuvenation." Yeah, and there's a nice little article there by somebody named Jeff Tate. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Kitts. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it just talks about what the band went through, mentions all the albums, but again, it does not mention Unmasked and Elder because it says the first st- step towards Kiss's 80s rebirth was 1982 Creatures of the Night. And it says in sharp contrast to the orchestral overtones of the Elder. So it brings it mentions the Elder as like a a slur almost. Yeah. Yeah, and then it just goes through the, the kind of the 80s history, just like a little brief kind of couple paragraphs about these songs on this compilation. And I, again, it's like a starter kit. You know, if you're not really familiar with the history of the band or this era, it's a good place to start. So the liner so, notes are in the liner notes are interesting and the photos, I think, are great. So if you go through this. Yep. So technically, there are 10 albums that could have been covered here. You would start with number one would be uh, Unmasked, then Music from the Elder, then Killers, then Creatures, then Lick It Up, Animalize, Asylum, Crazy Night, Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits, and Hot in the Shade. So what songs are covered? Zero from Unmasked. Zero from Music from the Elder. Zero from Killers. Two from Creatures. And there are the two tr- first tracks, Creatures of the Night, Lick It Up, um, Creatures of the Night, and I Love It Loud. And then Lick It Up only has two, Lick It Up, All Hell's Breaking Loose. <laughs> this is, <laughs> we'll get to them. Uh, then you got two from Animal Eyes, Heaven's on Fire, Thrills of the Night. Two from Asylum, uh, All Night, Tears Are Falling. Two from Crazy Nights, Crazy Nights. Oh, sorry. Crazy, crazy nights and reason to live. And then two from um, Hot in the Shade, Hide Your Heart and Forever. Now, you're going with 12 tracks. As always, we like to think, what would you have put on there? So if you're only going with 12 tracks, I get it. But some albums aren't represented, which are four of them, really. Unmasked music from the Elder Killers. And smashes thrashes. Yeah, it, I don't expect to have a compilation represented on a compilation. Let's put the X and Sex had a video and was a mild hit. So, so, so I could see that being on here. But so was you make me rock hard. I'm not talking about the compilation part of it. I'm no, 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 no. The, I got you. I got you. I mean, original tracks four, and same thing with Killers. Yeah, and, the, and because I'm, I'm thinking too, because Killers wasn't released in the United States, and those four tracks really didn't go anywhere in the United States. I could see that not being. A, let's put the X and Sex not being on here. It's kind of it's a little bit of a surprise. That was a big MTV hit. With the, with so, the video. So, uh, again, now, the next part of this, and I don't know if they planned these in advance. The next one takes off from basically Revenge until yep. uh, Psycho Circus. Yep. So, if you're going to do that, you should have backtracked and left a couple uh, of the uh, non-makeup on so that you could have it on part three. Because there's not many albums for the second, for the third part. And you have over 10 uh, at 10 for this one. Right. So look at those 10 songs that we mentioned, Tom. What do you take out? Well, I'm looking at the fact that for those albums, they got two songs representative. Okay. And they didn't that they didn't do that on the first uh, 20th century masters there's some albums that have one there's some albums that have three 
this album, they felt like they needed to be even across the board and give every album two, of course, with the ones that we mentioned that have not. So my thing here, Thrills in the Night, there's no need for this to be on here. Heavens on Fire is the only standout track from Animal Eyes. You could have easily put Let's Put the X and Sex in there or uh, A World Without Heroes or S- Thrills in the Night. Nobody knows that. So if you're buying this compilation, you don't know Thrills of the Night. Yeah, that, that 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 to me, that stands out as the one that really but you would fall. know. Let's put the X in sex. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So the only other thing I'm thinking is, OK, we've already mentioned the first couple albums that don't have a song. Then you'd get into killers. Nothing was really a hit or uh, least, something really. they played live ever. So right. other than everybody would that ever heard those songs would say nowhere to run is probably the standout. Again, if you're not doing hits and stuff, are you really going to need to put that in there? So if you don't put that in there, even Creatures of the Night. Not a hit. I, I don't think it needs to be there. Nope. I agree. Right? I would either have I Still Love You, but you can't open with that. Or right. or maybe War Machine. I agree. Yeah. Creatures right. of the Night, there's no need for that to be on here either. Yeah. Lick yep. it up and All Hell is Breaking Loose, I think that's fine. That's the two yeah, big cause, songs. Because yeah, there were videos. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need anything else. They didn't they didn't really play anything other than maybe uh with the exception of Fits Like a Glove, which became a live staple for them. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that doesn't need to be on a compilation. And you're absolutely right, in my opinion, about Heavens on Fire being the only track needed for Animal Eyes. Oh, totally. Now, obviously, Tears of Fallen has to be in it for this era. Yes. All, all night, but not who wants to be lonely. Even all, all night does it. I mean, there's a video. So I'm just thinking, okay, let's table that. What else would you put? I don't know. Crazy nights, I get. Reason to live, I get. Yep. But no turn on the night. We love that, but no one else. That's yeah, not it was a, a song. Video. That- it was popular on MTV. And it was more popular overseas, kind of, than it was here. I mean, and these then, are. The, hide your these heart. are U.S. releases, so I mean, hide your heart, and then forever. The only other thing I would think from this era would be rise to it. Yeah, because I had a, that had a, a video, a very a very popular video. Yeah, so Tom, I look at this and I say, okay, let's put the X and Sex. I think was a mild hit for them. Yeah, oh, absolutely, and, especially with the video. In yeah. this era, if you're doing this era, so you would take out Thrills in the Night and put Let's Put the X and Sex. Definitely. Let, Let's put the X and sex is more representative of Kiss's vision in music during this era than than Thrills in the Night. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. So, so let's put in the X and sex would take over for Thrills in the Night. Yes. What else are you putting in? Honestly, I would de- I would put Rise to it because it was a mild hit. And it had a for, it had a what? It had a very beloved video. Um, honestly, I would. See, I get that. It's, because- t- uh, it's tough because I, I want to take out uh, All Night, but it had a video. I'm, I'm actually leaning toward taking out Crazy Crazy Nights, the title That's track. huge in England. I know huge. it is. I know it, but I know it is. But these are U.S. releases primarily. So the other thing I was thinking is like you really can't take Creatures of the Night because then you'd leave one song from that album. So Yeah, but that's is- okay because looking at volume one, they only had one song from hotter than hell and they only had I, I one, agree. they only had one song from dynasty so they can so, do it i get i i i i see but i'm just saying i think creatures of night would be there more so than having a third song from asylum like who wants to be lonely no or I, I wouldn't a third that. song or a third song from hot in the shade which is a rarity for these compilations and that being rise to it but the flip side to that argument is hot in the shade especially I mean, maybe I know, I know I'm not talking about what fans like, obviously fans love creatures of the night and some fans do not like hot in the shade, but that tour and those videos were bigger than anything that happened during the creatures of the night era. So I don't, I don't see uh, putting hide your heart on here. uh, Excuse me, putting rise to it here to me makes more sense than putting creatures of the night on there. See, the problem with this compilation is, and this is where I'm going to, kind of have to tie it in with the first one you're yeah. only putting 12 songs on here exactly they're locked into the 12 so if you're locked into the 12 you're taking an era that doesn't kind of fit that creatures of the night like coming into this album but then right. again creatures of the night era songs 
is hard rock, real hard rock kiss with makeup. That right. doesn't fit the 70s compilation because those songs don't fit with Strutter and, and other songs. So, right. but because you put those two in here, they're not, it's not the flavor of this album that you would think of. Oh, we're doing non makeup 80s kiss compilation. So, Creatures of the Night, I Love It Loud kind of throw this thing off. I, I, it's, I think the, the really interesting thing here for the, for these compilations or any compilation in general, cause we cover all of them. We haven't gotten to all of them yet, but we will eventually. We say this all the time. It's like, how the hell is that song on a compilation? Who, who decided to put that on here? So I always like the, the backstory and I don't know the backstory about who sits down and says, these are the tracks that are going on volume two, because you would like to think that the purpose of releasing this is to obviously to sell it. So why not stick to the things that were popular during this era, i.e. the videos and the songs that were performed on tours? Yeah, I can right? see where right? they came up with. Somebody came up with the concept. We'll just take two songs from each album. That's or what I think. You're fuck, right. Fuck Unmask and fuck Elder and, and fuck those other compilation things. So take two from each. All right. What's the two from Animal Eyes? That's how you get Thrills of the Night on this. Thrills on the night. I feel like th- for a long time. I don't mind the song. Thrills. It's Thrills. okay. I don't either. But I, but I feel like everyone's like, oh, thrills in the night. I'm like, dude, dude, that song sucks. It's like a plotting. <laughs> I don't like it. I like. I, 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 I like, it. like it. The, the video's horrible. But and that's probably well. You kind of just probably answered our question. There was a video for it, so that's probably why they looked at it. Maybe. Even so, thrills of the night shouldn't be there. Let's put the X and sex should be there. And even you, uh, that, you that's, me rock that, hard could be there. Let's put the X and sex is the most glaring omission. I mean, reason to live. You're going to keep that there. Cause that had a video. That was a mild hit crazy nights. It was a big hit overseas. Didn't do anything here. Really? Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, all night, big video, big, stupid video. Obviously tears are falling a hit. Lick it up in all hell's breaking loose. We talked about that. That makes sense. I mean, you're not going to, again, they set the standard with volume one by putting three songs from an album. Like I said, Hotter Than Hell had one song. Dynasty had one song. So, I mean, they could, they could, they could do whatever they want. I understand they... the logic because they like the first volume was, yeah, let's do the one with the four original four members. Right. And that goes right. up to really Dynasty, even though Unmasked Peter's credited, but. Right. No, th- that makes sense as the end point. Um, but I, I think it's interesting too. Why, why stop at 12? Who, who locked you into 12 tracks? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. like the CD can hold more. Of course. Of course. Now that being said, I think this is bordering on a perfect representation of the band during this era. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I mean, I know we're, we're because we have a podcast and we talk about kiss and we go through it with a fine tooth comb. That's why we're doing this. But in retrospect, and I mean, I, I I don't think this is a bad compilation. I think it's a really good representation of this era. Yeah, I, I do, too. This isn't one of those. What I like about this, there's nothing glaring on this. Like, I think we've done some that are like, what the fuck in the middle of this is Flaming Youth doing on this? Like, oh, you're yeah. like, you know, things like that that you're like, that doesn't make who fucking came up with that idea. Yep. And they would get thrown in the middle of one of these uh, compilations that you're like, dude, who put that in? Like, what? Well, like, um, like, look at, look at Kiss World. We, 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 we've reviewed Kiss World. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not arguing with this, but like, they have, I'm a legend tonight on there. <laughs> you know, I mean, they have like, they have Shandy on there. Yeah. So it's almost like they throw darts at the Kiss dartboard and be like, eh, we know we're going to put Detroit Rock City and Love Gun and, and Deuce, but let's get creative. Yeah. On some of the, you couple, know, let's in, throw what's called the deep cut in there. Yeah. Sh- yeah. Shandy. Right. Oh, okay. So you always, you always wonder like, who's behind this? Like, what's the, what's the mindset behind this? You know, which is why I love picking apart compilations because there were some amazing ones. And then there were some that's like, eh, I don't know what I'm doing with this. I mean, of course, this came out in the CD era. So we own them all. And anything kiss related, we were eating up, eating up and, and taking it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No. So, Tom, want to rank this? Let's do it. All right. So these are the albums that we have done so far for compilations. 
Killers, Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits, Greatest Kiss, The Very Best of Kiss, The Millennium Collection, and Kiss World. All right, Tom, you want to tell everybody how you ranked the first six? Yeah, we're going to start with covers like we always do. So for me, my covers, I got Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits at number six, Kiss World at five, Greatest Kiss at four, The Millennium Collection, it's part one, but they don't call it that. It was the first one. Uh, at number three, the very best of Kiss at two, Killers at number one. Um, I like this cover. I think the band looks pretty badass. Paul looks a little silly, but I, I, I like this there. Gene looks fucking great. Uh, and Eric with those drums. I think this is really cool. Um, but you're competing against, you know, Makeup Kiss, which to me is kind of tough to beat. Uh, I'm going to put this at number five. I'm going to put it below Greatest Kiss and above Kiss World. Okay. For the cover. All right. What about so, you, Booger? For me, I had Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits at six. Greatest Kiss five, Kiss World four, Very Best of Kiss three, Millennium Collection at two, and Killers at number one. Tom, I, I'm not, I mean, this isn't bad. Paul just kind of ruins this. He, he looks does. like a, an idiot in this one. I don't know what he's doing. But um, I would put this, I don't know. I, I don't mind Kiss World. If you're going to acknowledge, I'm not the type that's going to, oh, I never want to see Eric and fucking Tommy and makeup on a cover. Like, dude, they're in the fucking band. So, and they're wearing their makeup and they look decent on Kiss World. So I'll put it underneath Kiss World and right above Greatest Kiss. Okay. Um, I'm putting this at number five as well. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go over to the ranking of this actual album. Yep. Want to read your uh, your uh, top six, please? Yeah. So six, I got for me the first Millennium Collection. Number five, Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits. Number four, Kiss World. Number three, The Very Best of Kiss. Number two, Greatest Kiss. Number one, Killers. Okay. So the problem with these Millennium Collections, which is why the first one is at number six, is because they only capture a snapshot of the band, whereas all these other ones capture their entire career. For better or for worse, some more, some less. So for a compilation that only captures from Unmasked to Hot in the Shade and technically only counts Creatures of the Night to Hot in the Shade, um, I love these songs. I love this era, but it only encapsulates that era. Um, I'm putting this one last. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Putting this one last. Uh, it's just hard to compete with, with a compilation that, that uh, crosses the entire span of their career. So. All right, Tom. So for me, I had Millennium Collection Volume 1 as number 6, Greatest Kiss at 5, 4, Kiss World, The Very Best of Kiss at 3, Smashes, Thrashes, and Shit at 2, and Killers at 1. Uh, I think this is easy for me. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm putting this at number 7. Uh, the, the thing is, I want to say, is it's not a bad compilation. I actually like this. It's just that you're only having a you know, 12 songs and only from a very specific era. I don't think this, if you're going to only pick 12 songs, I don't think you can get much better than this. I agree. So, but it's too, it's too finite. It, 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 it needs to be larger. If you're going to do like, if they added four other songs to this, I would probably move it up. Yeah. Um, But with oh. only 12 songs and only from this era, I, I got to go as number seven. Also, we failed to mention the back cover of the CD, which, in my opinion, should have been the front cover. Yeah, that much, looks like the Reasons much to Live video. Yeah, much better. It's got the big, giant kiss sign. The band looks really cool performing. Uh, Bruce looks badass. Gene, Paul, they look great. That should have been the front cover. So we, we the, the, that back cover should have been the front, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. Well, another compilation down. Um, and what do we do next, Tom? We got our question of the week. This one comes from our buddy, Adam Stevenson, who's got his own podcast, The Metal Oasis, with his buddy, Orion. Great show. I've actually been on there twice. Um, Do they talk about good music? Well, that depends on that's subjective. I was on there twice and two albums that I love. He says, uh, you know, I love learning about the costumes of every era, and I'm curious about the Psycho Circus album. When the band reunited, it would make sense to put on the Love Gun or Destroyer costumes as they were the most iconic, especially Gene and Ace. 
I'm curious as to why they decided to revert to the Destroyer costumes for a new album when we now know that new costumes were made for Sonic Boom and Monster. What do you think of that? Because when all else fails, they always resort back to Destroyer. When they want to promote a new album, oh, this sounds like Destroyer. Oh, like Destroyer. Like, I think it's just laziness. Well, thank you, because you just said it exactly. You have a new album, but you're going to go back to old costumes. I give him credit, at least for Sonic Boom and Monster. They tried. I, 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 even the end of the road tour, they tried some new stuff. I mean, it's all a variation on stuff that's existed throughout their entire career. But I'm like, you have a new album, like Psycho Circuit. Like, what are you doing? The, 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 those Destroyer costumes are Destroyer costumes. Not to mention, if you really wanted to get creative, you could have went batshit insane with, like, circus-related costumes. Like, really, like... You know what I mean? Like big top fucking carnival type of outfits. Or something, honestly, something fucking crazy and stupid. Where um, I'm going to put a red nose on for myself, but you don't really need it because I got a drunken Irish politician's nose these days anyways. Peter, I got a great idea. Since you're the cat, man, how you about you dress up as like a lion tamer? You can <laughs> hold a chair and a whip and keep those. You can use those two and Paul starts giving you shit. Kind of give him a little fucking whip. And I'll play a tune out like that. <laughs> no, Adam, it's a great question. I think Zeus said it. He, Zeus beat me to the punch. It's lazy. <laughs> That's all it is. I mean, there's really no other answer. I mean, I I'm wish there was another answer. It. Yeah, I'm uh, too lazy. I mean, I like the monster costumes. I thought Gene looked kind of badass. I thought the, the monster stage was awesome. It had that big spider thing. Um I mean, even the Psycho Circus, when I saw that tour, like that, that was, that was at least they were trying something creative and, and new with the stage, but the costumes. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you, buddy. Kind of, kind of lame, kind of boring. It made sense for Love Gun for the reunion because it's a reunion. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Sometimes Kiss frustrates us yeah. sometimes. <laughs> I know. I know. Adam, uh, thank you as always. And go catch his podcast, The Metal. Oasis. Yes, good stuff, especially if you're a hardcore metal dude. Tom, where can people find us? Please start with our website, shoutitoutloudcast.com. Shoutitoutloudcast.com. You can find everything there. Right on the main page, you got links to our Patreon, links to our Amazon store, links to our merch by Amazon. Uh, and then you have the the links right there to Album Review Crew. We just mentioned we talked about Queensryche Operation Mindcrime. Links to Dorm Damage, our sidecast where we talk about anything and everything that's not even KISS related. Some usually sometimes not even music related. And Zeppelin Chronicles. You can click in there, go inside, check out all of our rankings. You can comment directly. You can send us messages directly. So that's the best place is our website. And of course, our email, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. And all the social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, very active. Follow us if you haven't. If something cool comes across your way, please, we love when people take pictures or tag us. If you're buying merch and you're wearing one of our T-shirts or hoodies or our buddy Gabbly DeGook took a picture of her coffee mug today. So that's always great. I mean, the best part of waking up is Tom and Zeus in your cup. So keep doing that. We love you guys when you do that. Um, and yeah, we mentioned earlier, a wonderful Patreon family. Thank you guys, Joe and Mike. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of the family. And of course, we always like to say that we are part of the Pantheon Podcast Network of shows. Tons of great shows. Check them out. Pantheonpodcast.com and we're there too. Yeah, I always like to tell people they can DM us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is uh, moving up. If you see our page, make sure you subscribe. It's a big help to the show, and you're doing us a favor, so thank you. Uh, then you can always go over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star child review uh, there, or Facebook, or Stitcher, or Spotify, or Podchaser, wherever you can give a five-star child review, please do so. And when you do, we will read it on the air. One of the ways you can help the show, we talk about it all the time, Patreon, or go to our website and you can uh, get some of our merch or go to our Amazon store or give us a five-star child review. Great ways to help the show. We appreciate it and we'll definitely give you a shout out for that. Thank you for that. And then also, please, I always tell people, 
the website again, shout it out loudcast.com, shout it out loudcast.com. You can get anything you could ever imagine us talking about every episode, every ranking, everything is there. Peruse the website. You'll have fun. And in addition, don't forget, you can email us at shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com, shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. And what we like to do is end on famous last words. You got any? Oh, I do. In the evening, when she takes to the street, (laughs) she goes hunting with a body in heat and desires she's kept hidden inside make her tingle. And she knows why she lies. Ooh, God damn. Um, down Stanley Eisen. <laughs> exactly. Gotta spread the word. Tell it to the people right now. No later. Right now you do it. Take a look around. Feel the new sensation. Set the world on fire. Rock the nation. Oh, hey, Tom, Loudcasters, Kiss Army, our uh, sponsor, ABCPA Inc. Everybody out there, thank you. You guys rock. You're the best. Thank you so much for supporting the show and being fans, listeners, patrons, everything. You guys rock. And Zeus, as always, my friend, thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout. Little boy blue. <laughs> he needed the money. <laughs> <laughs>